PDP presidential candidate in the 2019 presidential election, Atiku Abubakar, speaks up for the first time over the judgment of the court on the election petitions. He insists he will pursue judicial action and assures that he will ensure Nigeria makes a course correction away from tyranny. And the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Femba Jabi Amila, has threatened to report his service chief to President Hamadou Buhari after they failed to honor the invitation of the leadership of the House. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Joaquim Aloe. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, has threatened to report the service chiefs to President Muhammadu Buhari after they failed to honor the invitation of the leadership of the House. The meeting, according to him, was to hear from the service chiefs on the challenges posed by the Boko Haram insurgency and to know how the House could be of help. The Speaker, who was visibly upset, called off the meeting and announced a postponement to Monday, the 23rd of September. 2019, despite the presence of the Inspector General of Police, the Director General of the Department of State Services, and the Comptroller General of Immigration. The Speaker called off the meeting. I cannot understate my disappointment, or our disappointment, that the rest of the service chiefs are not here. Again, like I said, we call this meeting because it was invariable. I'm almost embarrassed, and to tell you the truth, I'm almost embarrassed. There was no call placed to my office to explain why. I'm just saying accountants and representatives. So, honorable colleagues, I'm, I'm not sure how to handle this, because I don't think this has happened that I know anywhere, any parliament in the world, any parliament in the world, where the head of parliament will call the service chiefs for a nagging problem, how to resolve it, and you have what you call no call, no show. I will personally see the president myself. I will, because we're supposed to work as one. Let's now check out some other stories we're following for you on our political roundup. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria is asking the federal government to consider the scale of its redundant public assets as part of efforts to increase its revenue base. Speaking at a news conference after the Monetary Policy Committee meeting in Abuja, the Central Bank Governor, Mr. Godwin Emefele, applauded the federal government's plan to increase the value-added tax from 5% to 7.5%. The CBM boss explains that the new initiative will improve fiscal revenue to support ex expenditure and reduce budget deficit. Ahead of the constitution of the presidential election appeal panel, the coalition of united political parties claim they have intercepted a secret list of a seven-man panel of justices of the Supreme Court about to be announced by the Chief Justice of Nigeria in a manner that jettisons the age-long tradition of selecting the members of the panel in order of seniority. The spokesperson of the coalition, Mr. Ikenga Guchinere, says since the 1979 presidential election, the tradition in the Supreme Court has been that the seven most senior judges of the Supreme Court are impaneled for the purpose of determining the presidential election appeal. Another dangerous development the attention of the opposition have been drawn to is the plot to stop the most senior judge of the Federal High Court, who is presently the acting chief judge of the Federal High Court, Honorable Justice John Soho, from becoming the substantive chief judge of the Federal High Court. The governorship election petition tribunal sitting in Ilorin has dismissed the petition of the People's Democratic Party seeking the nullification of Governor Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak election on the ground that he lacked the academic qualification. The tribunal ruled that a PDP candidate, Razak Atunwa, failed to prove the allegations, holding that instead all evidence shows that the governor sat for the examinations and therefore qualified to run for the election. He therefore dismisses the case for inability to prove their case. 
The Taraba State Election Petitions Tribunal sitting in Abuja has affirmed the election of Governor Dara Sishako of Taraba State following the tribunal's dismissal of the petition filed by Professor Sani Yaya, a member of the All Progressives Congress, challenging the governor's victory in the governorship polls in February. The tribunal, in a unanimous judgment, dismissed the petition for lacking in merit, stating that the All Progressives Congress failed to provide a candidate for the last election and as such lacked the capacity to challenge the winner of the election. The Delta State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal sitting in Asaba has reaffirmed the re-election of Governor Ifan Yokoa of Delta State, declaring him as the winner of the March 9, 2019 governorship election. In his petition, Great Ogbori and his party, APC, described the victory of the PDP as opportunistic and gold-digging, also alleging that the election was mad with irregularities, overvoting, and other activities contrary to the Electoral Act and guidelines. He had further asked the tribunal to nullify the election, order a fresh exercise, or declare him winner. But in a judgment that lasted for about three hours, Chairman of the Three-Man Tribunal, Justice Suleiman, dismissed the suit in all its entirety for failing to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Governor Kowa was not duly elected by majority of lawful votes cast at the election.